I just want to welcome everybody to attending. Uh, this is our first uh, live webinar that we're doing for 2021. And uh, in 2020, we started doing these like everybody else, <laughs> trying to find a way to keep people connected during the pandemic. And we are, uh, we were just really thrilled with how everything um, went and how much positive feedback we got. And so we're excited to start these again in 2021. And Text World asked us to do these um, uh, daily happy hours with their program so that uh, we could uh, help the people attending Text World get even better connected. And, uh, and then also certainly there's a lot of Fashion Mingle members who will be attending as well. Okay, so just a, a few more seconds to get set up here. Um, Okie dokie, that should be good enough. Takes a few seconds to get this started. Appreciate everybody's patience. Okay, and this should be good. So, okay, so thanks for everybody for jumping on. So you, we have a chat box that you're able to leave us questions. Um, and then we are going to have a few members here available for you to ask questions to. Um, and then um, we're going to bring in uh, each person. We're, what we're doing is we, we're doing this like a networking opportunity. So we want everybody to meet each other. And so we're gonna bring you in uh, one by one uh, to join the webinar and introduce yourself. So um, we will, Start bringing. I'm bringing in Adrena. Um, there's Allison. Um, and so while I'm doing this, I'd like everybody, as I'm bringing you on, to take turns uh, introducing yourself. And first of all, uh, we'll start with Oliver. Uh, hi, Oliver. Oliver is a Fashion Mingle member, and he's actually been a member of our media team. So, hey, say hi, Oliver, and tell everybody a little bit of what, what you do. Hi. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Oliver Archer. I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York. I've moved around so many places. I've lived in Texas, California, Seattle, and I mainly work with uh, models, social influencers, uh, some celebrities, designers, uh, modeling agencies, you name it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Send it through the chat. Wonderful. Okay, and uh, Matthew. Hi, thanks everyone. for joining us oh, today. Sorry, Matthew yeah. is a Fashion Mingle member. Yes, tell well, tell us uh, about your area of expertise. Sorry, sorry about that. I just jumped the gun there. Um, oh. I'm very happy to be here. I appreciate so much, Melissa, for giving me this opportunity to be um, talking about my interests here. And some background on me is I'm currently a student at University of Toronto in my third year. I originally come from a tech background. I was enrolled originally at Queens for math and engineering, but I withdrew after my third year once I did like um, 16 months in industry as like a, a practical experience in Toronto. I just found that the industry wasn't for me, but I did like certain aspects of the branding and design of it. So I kind of moved into real estate, which is a similar industry as my parents. Um, and I'm sort of blending that in like a WeWork sense with what I'm doing fashion wise. But my main area of focus and study in the academic sense is on fashion and governance or otherwise known as trend study and governance, um, trend study and human rights and uh, well, trend study and um, ethical commerce. So I aim to like just develop the content so people can have something to base on their discussions on for some well thought out arguments because I do realize that we're living in the age of noise. We're living in the age of um, any random opinion can suddenly become a doctrine for a certain group of people. So to just have a, a universal basis to um, to just you know build in the egalitarian sense and develop our, our, ourselves forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, D, nice to see you again. D is on our, our uh, mastermind panel uh, that we did. We did 30. 
36 mastermind panels uh, last year and Dee was on almost every single one. So thanks for joining us again, Dee. It's so nice to see you again. Oh, thanks okay. for having me, uh, Melissa. Um, I'm excited to be here and now. looking forward to 2021 and working with Fashion Mingle, which I love and, and all the great things that you guys do. So um, yeah, let's see. Do I need to introduce like what I do? Do you want me to do that? Yeah, or? tell us what you do because you're you're one of the digital uh, marketing experts that I know people are going to want to talk to. Um, so my company is called DCG Media Group LLC. You could find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, on Instagram on DCG Public Relations. So we work with all the billboards um, in Times Square, actually nationwide, but. Uh, Times Square is like the hot spot and it's starting to resurrect again. Um, hopefully by March, we will be full swing the way it used to be, hopefully. Um, I also do PR for many lifestyle brands, whether you're a beauty, fashion, or author, we can get you on a couple of morning show segments nationwide. And we do fashion shows. Uh, we do Times Square Fashion Week. Um, we do Hamptons Fashion Week, and of course, we uh, we own a magazine called Latinista.com. Thank you. Um, and let's see, we've got Glennis, who's one of our digital marketing experts. Uh, uh, Glennis, go ahead and introduce yourself, and let us uh, and tell everybody what you do and what what kind of questions they can ask you. Hi, I'm Glynis. I'm sorry for joining in a little late. Uh, my computer literally no crashed <laughs> seconds before jumping on this. So I really do apologize for that. And um, so my name is Glynis. I'm a Carol business consultant and SEO specialist for fashion and apparel companies. I have 20 years apparel industry experience. I also have a podcast called Chase Your Dreams Podcast for fashion entrepreneurs who are ready to pursue their passion and make a living doing what they love. And today I'm joining uh, the panel to talk about SEO, um, specialize in the areas of keyword research, content strategy, link building. So ask away. <laughs> um, very, very critical to digital marketing. Um, and I'd also like to introduce uh, Christine Dahl, who's on, uh, she's a big digital marketing expert. Christine's actually gonna be uh, featured as well on uh, Thursday at our production seminar, but uh, webinar, but Christine's got all kinds of, of uh, great knowledge about working with designers and brands on social media. So Christine, could you introduce yourself and, and give us an idea of the kind of, of um, expertise that people yeah, that so you I'm, have that I'm, people can I'm ask questions about? Yeah. Hi, Melissa. How are you? Thanks so much for having me on. Hi, everyone. So my name is Christine Dahl. I'm the founder of Fashion Angel Warrior. We are a fashion and marketing consulting agency working with both emerging and established designers, pretty much helping them every step of the way to start and grow profitable businesses. We help our clients in every area from social media and branding, design, development, tech packs, sourcing your fabrics and manufacturers, crowdfunding campaigns, costing, production, sales. We really are a one-stop shop for fashion designers. I'll put all of my information in the chat. That way, if you guys wanna reach out, you can. And thanks so much for having me. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us, Christine. And I'd also like to introduce Adrena Nelson. Um, Adrena uh, has a is a background. I'll let her introduce herself as well. Adrena, if you don't mind popping in. Um, Hi. But, <laughs> but she's actually the host of our new, our new podcast called Fashion Pro on the Go, which is going to be going live soon. So uh, Adrena, do you want to say hi to everybody and give everybody a little uh, info about what Fashion Pro on the po uh, Fashion Pro on the Go <laughs> podcast is going to be about? Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm an independent fashion designer and have worked for like major retailers in production and quality control in New York for like eight years. And I'm also in the tech industry as a web designer. Um, but yeah, so I'm also the host, podcast host for Fashion Pro on the Grow. Oh, I can't say it either. Fashion Pro on the Go. Uh, <laughs> and we're, we may have uh, created a problem for ourselves. I know. <laughs> 
and we uh, interview uh, fashion professionals in different disciplines across the fashion industry. So it's really good for anyone who wants to learn more about the independent fashion industry. Wonderful. Well, we're so excited to launch that. It'll be coming soon. So let's get started. Um, okay, so the plan is to only have about 30 people uh, live who can interact um, in, you know, uh, visually on here just because we have to get this done by five o'clock. So, um, you know, the more people that we have, the longer it takes. So if you are not live, or you, uh, you can actually ask questions in the chat, especially like say you wanna um, ask Oliver a question, uh, you know, just uh, type it out to him and then, you know, he can respond to you in the chat or he can talk about it live. And so what we're gonna do is ask, uh, I'm gonna go through and ask each one of you to introduce yourself, um, tell us where you're from, uh, what you do, and give us a question um, for one of the panelists, or you can just give us a question in general. And then, you know, if you have a have um, a question specifically for somebody, you can say their name. But otherwise, just tell us what the question is, and then we'll just take turns chiming in. You know, if we have something to offer. Okay. So, um, Allison Holmes, would you like to go first? Sure. Thanks for having me. It's nice to see all you guys. Um, so I am a freelance pattern maker. I help women's wear brands um, navigate pre-production without the technical hassle. And I also host the How Fitting podcast, which is for fashion entrepreneurs about how they grow their businesses, making clothes that fit their customer and their values. So that's what I do. And I'd love to ask the panelists, how do you decide you know, with your digital marketing, what to focus on and spend your time on versus what to ignore. Cause there's so many platforms and mm -hmm. so I'd love to know like how you kind of weed out what's worth it and what's not. Yeah, I would, I'd love to hear uh, everybody's opinions on that. I know with Fashion Mingle, I mean, that's a, it's a huge challenge. And of course we do have a team, but if you're, uh, you know, a sole uh, entrepreneur, uh, it's going to be really, really hard to manage. Uh, so I, you know, obviously in the fashion industry, Instagram, you know, is, is the one that people are watching the most. Uh, but also I think LinkedIn is something that we often ignore. Um, Oliver, you, mm -hmm. as a photographer, uh, what do you see with some of the designers and models that you work with, uh, where do they like to post the pictures that you take? So what, what the plan is usually when I take pictures, uh, we try to first publish them. So when we go through publishing, it'll take about a month after it gets published and they'll share it on Instagram. But um, the lot of traction I've seen is, you know, through Google AdWords and people find you through your website that way and Instagram, uh, TikTok, not as much really because it's a lot of video. It's basically how your targeted market consumes your, uh, you know, your photos, your videos, but it's been mainly Instagram and website where people ask questions or uh, want to book uh, a shoot. Okay. Now, uh, Dee, you do a lot of work with digital marketing with your clients. Uh, which platforms do your clients prefer? Um, well, we do a couple things. We definitely use Instagram, but what we try to do um, is do IG Live for 15 to 20 minutes with an influencer that has a good amount of verified followers. Um, we also, because I think that brings a lot of engagement and traffic to the brand. I also think you got to do a lot of A-B testing, but it has to be have a quick turnaround. You can't try it for three months. You got to be like, okay, this didn't work. Boom. What's next? This didn't work. Boom. What's next? I also think you should try Groove Funnel. Um, funnel pages tend to work very well. Um, and I use Groove Funnel. And it's kind of like a sub page to your website. Because I think you, you know, depending on how your website is, depending on what kind of clothing you sell, 
I'm not sure what you know your your brand is, but I think um, keeping your your website simple, straightforward, and clear because I noticed that a lot of clients that I work with their websites are crazy. Like they have so much stuff, and it could get confusing. And so if they get on a morning show and then people go into their website, they give up because people have a very short attention span. And so you really don't want to that. We need the people in Ohio to take this virus more seriously. And we ask you to Sorry, wear a mask funny. and to social distance. Yes. Please take oh the steps to help us that? keep you safe. A message from the Ohio Department of Health. What, what's going on right now? Oh, it's it's somebody, Dr. somebody, somebody, is somebody is like crashing the room. Is Jared? Jared's not muted right now. Jared's not muted. Coming from Jared, I believe. It yeah. is. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Okay, got him off. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Glennis, do you, do you have anything you want to add to that from a, from a, your perspective, from SEO and link building perspective? Yeah, um, just one platform that I just recently got on actually um, is called Clubhouse. I'm not sure if people um, have heard of it or have been on it, but it's been some really good conversations happening there. Um, so what it is, it's strictly audio. And it's different speakers um, coming up on stage and speaking based on their expertise. Um, I ran a room in there as well. And um, currently it's actually not open to public. It's by invite only. Uh, but there are a lot of good discussions happening um, with the people in the fashion industry. And um, yeah, this the one place I wanted to bring up because okay. it's really hot. Uh, right now <laughs> and um, so if anybody's on Clubhouse like yeah follow me um, mm -hmm. I'm at Glynis Tao <laughs> and I'd love to connect with you there but yeah I mean you know without repeating everybody's saying you know Instagram mm -hmm. for sure uh, is a mm -hmm. great but Clubhouse also, is a good new new place uh, yeah. Matthew what social media platforms do you like to use so I um, prefer Instagram because Instagram lets you build a narrative and a story. And I find that underneath um, Instagram, it's sometimes helpful to have um, another platform or level of communication. Um, if, if not, just use like the close friends thing to just sort of develop like a group within a group. Cause um, that's like kind of what the, the aim is for a lot of the successful companies um, or brands, I should say. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, uh, just to add on to this, is that from a more general strategic point of view, I feel like building on that question of when it's worth it and what's worth it, depending on your brand, um, it depends on how you've developed and how far you've developed your house codes, your house aesthetic, and your house values. Um, for example, in the situation of micro versus large-scale influencers, you would use micro-influencers like, like D was mentioning with A-B testing to further refine like what works for the core demographic that you're trying to target. And then once you've defined it and seen what works, then you can go move into large-scale influencing and, and you know, see those effects. Um, but mm -hmm. all of that is based on how well you've developed the content or like the aesthetic or the values right. or like the, the codes. Yeah. Christine, I'd love to get your feedback since you work so closely with designers and I know that digital marketing is a real important part of what you help them with. Yeah, so my answer would be if you're already established and you've had a little bit of traction online already, you can easily look at your Google Analytics and kind of see and track and figure out where your customers are actually coming from, where you're getting the most traffic over to your website. Is it coming from social? Is it coming from advertising? Is it organic traffic? Is it coming straight from Google? If you're not already established and you're just starting out, I do recommend doing a little bit of everything. And I know that sounds crazy because there are so many platforms out there, but you do need to kind of test. And so one way around doing every single social media platform out there is one, figuring out, okay, where are your strengths? If you're really good at Instagram, but you're horrible at Twitter, like me, I just don't do Twitter, right? I just don't do it. I only focus on Instagram. Um, so you can focus on where your strengths are. And then the second thing would be focusing on where your target customer is actually hanging out. There is some kind of broad demographics depending on the type of platform. So if you're going for a younger customer, TikTok, Instagram would be great. If you're going for an older customer, LinkedIn would be better. So you can kind of go off of those demographics to also base which platforms you should spend the most time on. What great, great input. Uh, J Janice Lee, would you like to introduce yourself and let us know uh, what kind of help you're looking for? 
Hi, um, I'm Janice. I am a bridal designer. I'm up and coming. It's called Beyond the Ceremony. And I would love some insight onto um, SEO. And if, uh, Glennis, if you have any um, like start out resources that you can recommend for, for research or to um, hop into learn, that information, because there's a lot, yeah. <laughs> that you recommend that's like kind of in layman terms and um, easy to understand. <laughs> There's a million articles out there, so. It really is. Um, yeah. yeah, so I actually, I'm gonna just put, uh, put in the chat here a link because I have a SEO uh, training video series here oh, that actually it's um, right here, yeah. If you wanna check that out, uh, so it's a series of training videos that teaches you about the basics of SEO. What is SEO? Why is it important? Mm -hmm. And also does, uh, there's one on keyword research. There's, um, some that talk about link building. So I go through all like basically what SEO is. So if you think about SEO, really there's three parts, which is technical SEO on page SEO and off page SEO. And, um, yeah, so off-page SEO includes link building, and that's to get links from other websites, inbound links from other websites back to your website. Mm. So um, yeah, Ch check out the training video, um, and then feel free to reach out to me and um, if you have any further questions, um, but that's probably a great resource to start with. Excellent, thank you. Yes, and, and I'd really encourage everybody to start, if you haven't got an SEO plan on your website, definitely educate yourself um, by watching Glennis's videos and reading up on it. Uh, because even with just a basic formula of SEO um, on the content on your website, it can really bring traffic for years and years to come. I have a very simple formula that I use on, on Fashion Mingle. And some of the articles that, you know, we've, we, uh, did, I don't know, five years ago, still bring a ton of traffic to the site because I put time into figuring out what, you know, what SEO should be done on the page. So uh, it, 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 it takes time in the beginning, but it has such long-term value. You really can't afford not to do it. And the other thing I like to think about with SEO is that, um, you know, this is, this is basically free advertising forever. You know, the internet's not going away. <laughs> and so if you put an article out there and you put the t a little bit of time in to optimize it for SEO, then that's going to bring traffic to your website forever. And, and that's, that's free advertising. So it's, yeah, I can't stress enough how important it is. Um, let's jump over to uh, Bernarda. Would you like to jump in and introduce yourself? Hey everyone, nice to meet you. Um, I just started probably a week ago um, to launch my brand, but um, up till this point, I'm still just collecting followers on Instagram and then I'm setting up my Facebook business page and everything. And I'm still in process of developing some designs. Do you have a specific question you'd like to ask? Um, Probably on, no, not, not quite, not yet. Okay, well, I'm so, uh, want to congratulate you on launching your brand and really happy to, uh, to hear that and wish you well. Uh, do we have anybody else that wants to raise their hand who has a question? Because maybe that would be the fastest way to get, to get uh, all of the questions answered. Um, and then I'm going to uh, bring in a few more people. I prefer if you're going to ask a question that you are on video, just so that, um, you know, we, we can get to know you a little bit better. Um, and what we're hoping to do is to uh, give everybody a chance to um, ask questions that are, you know, causing them some pain points in their business. Um, you know, I, I want to 
talk to Matthew. I want to have Matthew talk a little bit more about, um, you know, the importance of having a story and, uh, and having a, a plan for your digital media marketing. I know, uh, Matthew, you've got um, a template that you, uh, you know, think people should use so that they can understand the process of figuring out, um, you know, uh, what you need to promote about your product, who your consumers are. Tell us a little bit more about that. So, oops, I just sent it without formatting it. So um, if somebody wants to pick that apart, <laughs> that would help me a lot here. So basically what I just sent is a template for what I would consider a creative white paper. I do come from the engineering industry, the semiconductor industry. So we did use a lot of similar documents to document technology um, in a way that could be understood by many different teams working in disparate places. And fashion is, is an industry where like um, that is very useful. So think of this as, a, as like a tech pack for an aesthetic, a tech pack for a certain campaign, a tech pack for an activation. Um, so to start, I start with first descriptions of the product. I would recommend that in order to build, um, in order to build this white paper, you start for this first describing the physical characteristics of the product, the monetary aspects of it, and the nature of the product, like say outerwear versus um, ready to wear, that, that's everyday ready to wear. Um, second is consumer. When you're looking at uh, to start a marketing campaign, for example, you have to look into the demographics of your consumer and make sure that when you're looking into these demographics and making statements, it's very well researched, almost in an academic sense where you have a source from it, a reputable source. Um, this sort of ties into the idea of ethical commerce. And uh, on top of that, um, you would have the ideologies and the values that are commonly shared within the demographic, what's the dominant like way of thinking. Um, in your target demographic and your target uh, group or audience. And lastly, the dynamics that these groups have or these subgroups within these groups have with other groups and within themselves. So how they interact with other members or so people in society. Um, lastly is um, the message. So for example, like the emotions and desires that are appealed to if, when you're in the, in the rhetorical sense of the communication that you're gonna be pushing. So ideals and perspectives, and, the, and a sort of overview of what mechanisms specifically do you have in mind that makes sense and align with your brand for um, this kind of marketing campaign. And this is just a very okay. general okay. overview. Yeah. Okay, great. It is really, really important to think through your digital marketing plan. Don't just start throwing stuff up there, really plan it out. Uh, and so Matthew's tips are really good. And then also um, another resource I'd like to suggest you guys uh, look into is HubSpot. Uh, they actually have some social media, free social media training, um, and they even have a, a, a calendar that you can download that kind of helps you plan out um, your social media messages. Uh, and then that way you can actually look over the course of a month and be very intentional about what you're posting. Um, I'd like to ask Oliver, you know, as a photographer, you know, you have beautiful content already. And so you, you know, people love to follow photographers because they're seeing, you know, beautiful pictures of models and designer clothes. Um, can you give us any uh, advice on, um, you know, like how you got started, you know, what you learned uh, about, you know, the, the, the type of uh, quality of photography you need in order to get people to follow you? Uh, so I started with like, like, like Matthew, like an engineering background. So I worked in biotech. And so I already had kind of that technical background. And I started from film school and then switched over to fashion photography. And basically, I'm a self taught photographer. And I've learned everything from YouTube, just spending hours and hours on YouTube. Um, you just have to make mistakes early on and you just have to experiment and not care what people think really. And then you have to also follow um, photographers that you like, and then look at their styles, see if you could um, find some inspiration from there. Because certain photographers, they're already, you know, pretty high, if you could kind of follow that kind of style. Um, I'm not saying copy or, you know, you know, um, copy their exact style. But if you could find your small niche, I think that helps a lot. Um, but I say shoot a lot, edit a lot, make mistakes, and not care 
whether you have a large following or not, because it's basically how many, um, if you could relate to other people and actually tell a story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the following will come. Yeah. Um, Chris, Christine, I'm curious with uh, the designers that you've worked with, um, you know, it is so much work to actually create quality content. Do you have any uh, suggestions on how to get into it and start getting into a routine that's not too demanding? We actually uh, have an entire online course that teaches this, but we also have a free blog. I'll post it in the in the comments there so that you guys can take a look at it because it is really important, especially on Instagram, that you have a really beautifully aesthetically pleasing feed. There is, um, you know, people are more likely to follow you when your pictures all look really beautiful and they all kind of cohesively go together. You can look at my Instagram to kind of see what that kind of looks like um, and how we kind of plan it out for some of our clients. That's also a service that we do offer if you have no clue whatsoever what you should be posting to your Instagram. Um, so I will say number one, having a beautifully aesthetically pleasing feed is very important to getting followers. And then number two, knowing what to write in the captions, how to put call to action so that you're actually getting comments and not just people liking your photos because the comments are more important. Um, also carousel images are doing extremely well right now on Instagram because Instagram algorithm has recently changed and they're paying attention more to how long someone spends on your post. So having a carousel image where they have to flip through to see the other photos behind the first photo makes them spend more amount of time. So you'll likely get more engagement on that. So that's also really, really important. And, um, I lost my train of thought on what the last thing I was going to say, but those are some really good tips for sure. And I'll post the, the link to the blog in the, in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. Christine's got some, a lot of great courses. Uh, and so you should definitely check out her website, fashion angel warrior. Um, and, uh, we're actually going to be bringing her on as a coach, uh, in the coming weeks as we're almost there. We've been talking about it for a year. Uh, <laughs> so you'll be able to find her through our site as well. Um, let's introduce a couple of other, um, attendees who've joined us. Um, Madeline, would you like to introduce yourself and do you have a question? Oh, you're, well, hold on, can you, can you unmute yourself? I, I can't seem to do it from my end. There we go. Hi, um, I'm actually a physician who invented a tactile um, pillowcase that is therapeutic and helps um, people who are lonely um, alleviate their loneliness. And so um, I have a complete, I'm not, I'm in a completely different field so kind of but I'm but it's but it's a fabric solution and so I'm seeking um to learn about all these things I have a website but I haven't opened it so um for this group I don't think I have a specific question I just am absorbing a lot of um good new gotcha. that I appreciate but um um let's see yeah. do, do we have anybody who wants to raise your hand and ask a question I'm sorry did somebody have a question for me uh, yes, yes. So um, I just wanted to jump in and say, uh, hi, Madeline, how are you? I really appreciate, hey, hey, uh, I really appreciate the work you're doing in that space. I happen to have um, an autistic brother who's a nonverbal and over 18. Yeah, and, and that, you know what I mean? That's exactly yeah. what would be amazing for him. Like he has seizures and all that, and that would be very helpful, like in terms of, right? So um, yeah. if you, if I'll, I'll, uh, is there a way I could send you my email so we can be, I'm at the University of Toronto right now, but I'd love to talk, sure. just talk more Absolutely. and so I can contribute. Absolutely, yeah, the product is, is helpful to all kinds of people, anybody, um, I mean, you, autistic people, you know, in yeah. particular, because it's a, it's a security object for adults <laughs> basically yeah, sure. i mean yeah, we all had security blankets when we were little and our parents took them away and then you know we're big uh, people and we don't need to get that right but it's not true we, we all need you know that especially we're, a lot of people are suffering from with covid about the social is isolation i mean nobody's hugged mm. me in months and that's uncomfortable so yes my my email address is dr dr dot madeline m-a-d-e L I N E at mm -hmm. here with you cases, all one word. Okay. Yeah. And you can, you can, you're welcome to put that in the chat box. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much, Madeline. Thank you. 
Oh yeah. yeah, no, I'm happy. I'm happy to work because I'd like to learn more about that population too. We'll, we'll get in touch, Cause, definitely. Because I've looked at some of some weighting of these things because I think that the artistic mm -hmm. people like weight. So, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. I'll put yeah. this in the chat. Yeah, go ahead and put it in chat. So we've got about 20 minutes left. And so I wanted to also uh, talk about the importance of email marketing uh, and kind of give you uh, an, um, a little formula that, uh, that I use. Before I started Fashion Mingle, I worked with clients and uh, building websites uh, for them, graphic design, but also setting up their email marketing. And I kind of have this strategy that uh, I like to think about as like a car engine. You know, you cannot get your car down the road unless the engine is running. And that means everything in the engine has to be working correctly uh, in order to get the car to start. So um, I, I want everybody to really think about the importance of having a blog so that you can have content on your website. And there's some, and I know that sounds like a very overwhelming um, thing to try and tackle, especially if you're still a preneur. But like I mentioned earlier, if you do the blog content and you put in the SEO time, that content is, is there forever. It will always bring you value. But if you're gonna do a blog, you should also have an email marketing campaign set up to go with it. And so some of the tips I have to automate that process so it's not too much of a burden is to always have an, uh, some type of email capture on your website, sign up for you know MailChimp, Const Constant Contact. They're very simple to figure out and use. Um, they're free for a certain number of subscribers, it, the number changes, but I think it's about at 1500 right now, but it's, it's going to take you a long time if you don't have a list to get that high up. So you'll get to use the system for free uh, in the beginning. And then of course, any new feature that you decide you need is going to require you to pay, you know, because whatever the features are you need, you'll end up having to pay for that, <laughs> but it's still inexpensive. Um, and so what I recommend is having, you know, the email capture on your website, uh, having some type of uh, incentive to give people a reason to give you their email because nobody wants to be on another email list. So you have to give them a why. Um, you know, if it's a product you sell, obviously a discount. If it's a service you sell, uh, giving away a free guide. Um, uh, looking at Christine's website is, is great because, I mean, she's got this down to a science. Um, and, uh, and, but then what you can do is when you, if you have that email marketing system set up, uh, when you, you can actually set up an RSS feed from your blog so that whenever you write a blog article, it automatically uh, posts a, to your email marketing system and goes out to your email list. And so you can set it up in all kinds of various ways. I mean, there's a ton of options, um, but at the very least you could set it up to go out once a month to your list. And you, know, it, and you can design the RSS template very simple they have a lot of drag and drop and then that way anything that you are um, selling say say for instance uh, we had a wedding dress designer right so um, the obviously the people who are going to be coming to your website um, are getting married and so you can actually write blogs um, uh, that would be interesting for a, a, a bride. You know, it's not just about the dress. It, you can offer tips. You can um, you can offer resources. And then when you put that in a blog, it goes out through Mailchimp or Constant Contact, and it goes to that bride. You're keeping in front of her so that when she is ready to make a decision about the wedding dress designer she wants to use she will come and check you out and remember you. So um, Glennis is also an expert at creating content. And uh, Glennis, do you have some suggestions for why it's important to have content, but also some tips on how to produce it? 
Absolutely, because content is a, an important SEO ranking factor because that's what search engines are looking for. They are not reading images, they're reading text. So what you have the text, you know, words on your page is what the search engines or bots are crawling and indexing, right? So um, ideally you wanna write blogs that are around a thousand words if you can, but make sure that your topic, your blog is relevant, right? Cause it's more important that the blog is relevant to what the search is intent and what they're looking for. And you want to sound like you are the authority or expert in this, in your field. So quality over uh, quantity for sure. But in terms of SEO uh, wise, like, you know, a thousand words to 1800, uh, 1800 was like ideal sweet spot for word count um, for a, a blog article. Um, and try to post regularly on a consistent basis. If you choose to post weekly, then stick with a schedule. And you wanna make sure the words that you're using are semantically related. So once you write your, your blog article, don't start with keywords first, start with writing your blog, right? Around a certain topic, but then you sprinkle your keywords into that blog afterwards and go in and, 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 and optimize it. Um, and what they are saying is using something called latent semantic indexing. This is a Google ranking factor. And what they look for in the, the search engines is that what you're saying actually matches with what the relevancy is, right? With what people are looking for. And so latent semantic indexing means you're using words that are semantically related. So if you're writing an article about New York City, you want to use words like the Big Apple, yellow cabs, you know, um, Statue of Liberty, like those are words that are semantically related. So keep that in mind as some um, tips and going forward in 2021, you know, um, content is definitely important. Um, there's a lot of, you know, stuff out there. So really focusing on being an expert in what you do, um, be the source and provides like really valuable content out there. Um, and also another thing to keep in mind is video. Using video is really important and people who use video have, they show up more higher in the search. Um, and then also to reiterate, you know, Melissa's point in terms of email marketing as well. And that's a, a good way to also promote your content um, and tying it, it in and providing value to your audience and to, to your followers because you really, what you wanna do is to be able to nurture them right? And, and, and keep, keep your brand a top of mind. So um, just really think of, you know, the customer journey, right? And, and sort of the funnel. I know people have talked about the funnel, but you want to be able to nurture uh, people at every level, right? From top of funnel, which is like people who've never heard of you through the middle of funnel, right? Who have heard of you, but not yet ready to purchase and they want to get a taste. And so that's where the email marketing could come in because you could offer them something for free um, and then bring them through into per, you know, until they're ready to purchase. You can offer them like say a coupon code uh, for their first purchase. So really think of that, those levels and not really skipping steps, right? Because also when it comes to digital marketing, a lot of people go straight for the conversion and then they're placing ads to say buy now, but people have not even heard of you. So you got to think, you know, if you're even doing like did like advertisement pay per, paid ads like PPC you got to think of like having ads to build awareness level just awareness maybe just telling your story right but you're not really selling something and then bringing them through and then perhaps afterwards you can retarget them uh, uh, with a you know with a shop and, and to to a specific product so that's all I really wanted to say is to think about that funnel and think about the customer journey as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Glynis, that reminds me of another thing with the digital advertising side. You know, the um, images that you're using for advertising, whether they're on your social media or uh, on your blog, in your newsletter, um, or especially when you're actually putting up ads, they really have to be top quality. Um, you know, you can get really great uh, images from, from stock photography that could work in, you know, for some people, especially people with services. But, um, you know, if you have a, have a product, say, you know, you're, you have apparel designer, accessory designer, it's really, really critical to get 
uh, you know, the best quality photos. And many times that's not going to be something that you're, um, you know, skilled enough to do or have the right equipment to do because it, it, it includes lighting as well as the camera. So uh, before you wrap up, I'd love for Oliver to give us, um, you know, some of your best practices mm -hmm. on, you know, like what, what is it that's different that say a professional photographer like you uh, who he's located in New York City. So if we have any attendees from New York City that need help, Oliver is easily available to you. But Oliver, could you tell us like, what are the key, key things that you see that people should not do? Um, and then, um, you know, what's important as a, as a photographer um, to make sure that the photos look their best? Uh, so I think with photography is you can't afford to skimp on photography. I mean, you know, everybody has a cousin, everybody has a cell phone to take a picture. Um, you're not going to get the same quality. And uh, of course, what you're saying is lighting, but you always want to think of what the end goal is, is where is the, the, uh, the photograph going to live and who are your target clients? So if it lives on a website, you know, you, of course you have to have a clean website and those pictures have to match that cleanliness of your website. And a photographer, of course, is going to, you know, give you these high resolution images and remove all, you know, the particles that are unimportant. It could be, you know, for products be like this. Um, it can make the images pop a little bit sharper, increase contrast. And then you could actually build your story and your brand through um, photography. But if you have something like, you know, you're taking pictures on a cell phone, then I wouldn't recommend that. And of course, um, you always wanna find a photographer that's gonna match your style. So be sure to check out the photographer's website because each photographer has a different style. So if you don't like their style, find another photographer. Um, there's photographers who just does product photography, portrait, fashion. So find your niche photographer that has done it, you know, for a, at least a couple of years and is a, is a proven person that could deliver um, on your goals. Wonderful. What are, and, I, and Matthew, I think you have something you want to add as well. Oh, um, oh, it's just uh, like, I guess um, I'm going to just circle back to the uh, previous question a bit um, in terms of blog content and writing that. So one thing to note is that you do have the opportunity here to both shape the preferences of your audience and shape their palette. So what I mean by this is like, if for example, in the case of Essence this season, you have a lot of like loose fitting denim shorts, then suddenly that becomes something that's, you know, realistic to wear in the eyes of a lot of people that otherwise like myself would not consider that. So when creating content and delivering to them, just remember the impact it has long-term, both short-term and long-term on the demographic that you're targeting the people that receive that content. Okay, great. And then uh, Oliver, we have another question for you. Could you explain, uh, Thaddeus wants to know when you're the photographer, do you own the pictures or the client? Can you explain the licensing process? Because that is something that is very confusing. Yeah, so with what I've done is like for modeling, um, modeling shoots, you do like a modeling release. And from that modeling release, you own the copyright to the photos. But there is what you call usage rights, and the usage rights um, could have some time frames where they expire. Let's say that you, you know, give a brand usage rights for your images for three to five years, and after that uh, ends, they could either renew that license to continue to use that image, um, and then you could again uh, reobtain it. But uh, as far as the legality and the the lawyer stuff, I, you know, I'm not a lawyer or anything, but that's uh, my experience with um, images. If you do something like images for like a stock photography and you just have to have like the model release and then you could use it basically. Okay. And then the, the licensing with a photographer is, is that that's decided when you are working, when you're coming up with a contract with a photographer. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then you typically have a set fee for different Correct. licenses. Mm -hmm. So if you're, let's say you're licensing to like a small publisher to a large publisher, of course, those fees change. And what is it going to be used? Is it going to be used, you know, locally, city, um, 
you know, international publication. So of course you have to set prices based on that. Okay. So, so you'll want to, before you start working with the photographer, you're going to want to really think through what you plan to do with those photos long-term and discuss that with the photographer um, so that, you know, you have agreed upon a, the a fair price for licensing. Um, you know, I, this is something I think a lot of people don't know, and I don't know a ton about it. So Oliver can, can share more, but you know, each, each picture, uh, has metadata. And if you, you know, get a, a photo from a photographer and you haven't, gotten all the usage rights, they actually can very easily find those photos all over the web. And then they're going to send you a cease and desist. <laughs> but Oliver, do you have any tips on that or kind of like uh, cautionary tells you want to share? Uh, so there's certain companies, there's a company called Kodak One. So Kodak One, uh, basically you send in all your libraries of images with maybe like at least 500 photos or so. And they take out the kind of the, the grunt work of you checking photos to make sure that, you know, a certain photo is not being used without your permission. So they actually find certain photos and then they send the cease and the, and the this, uh, sorry, cease and, sorry, what is it? Cease and desist. <laughs> yeah, cease and desist. Uh, yeah, so they're the ones who do that and they, they take care of it. So yeah, if you're a photographer, I highly recommend um, Kodak One. Of course, you know, Google Images search uh, is pretty limited. Um, they could see your photo if the photo was, you know, reversed or colored, they, they look at the shape. It's, it's uh, they have their own uh, proprietary algorithm to look for those things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's certain times where people take your photos, let's say, you post the photo on Instagram and people share it on Instagram, it's okay as long as they, you know, tag you because it's still within the system. But when it gets outside of the system, let's say that they use your photo in Pinterest or they use it for their store, then of course, um, that's a red flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So try, I mean, I know that a lot of people have a hard time understanding why uh, the licensing system uh, is what it is, is for photographers, but you think the, in this case, the photographer is the artist. And so you have to remember that, that, and um, you know, it's just like Oliver is painting a picture and you want to hang that picture in your house, you have to pay for that picture. Um, and then if you wanted to hang that picture in your office, then you would have to buy two. <laughs> so that's my very simple way of kind of explaining uh, how that works. So um, let's, I want to wrap up, but uh, Christine put some really good content in the chat for you to think about. And I really wanted to bring up the, uh, the repurposing concept. Um, Christine, you want to expand on some ideas on how people can repurpose content so we're not constantly creating new content? Yes. So repurposing is one of my favorite things to do because I don't have a lot of time. And I also don't like to write blogs because it takes way too much of my time. So one of the things that I do is we do Facebook Lives every Tuesday inside our Fearless Fashionpreneur Facebook group. And we also do them on Instagram occasionally, but they're always inside that Facebook group. And so we record the Facebook live. It's typically 30 minutes long. I transcribe it actually while I'm recording it. So I don't have to pay someone additional fees to transcribe it for me. One of my assistants will proofread it because obviously with transcribing, you know, words get a little jumbled up and, and certain things. So one of my assistants will proofread it for me and then post it up on a blog. Of course, we'll do all the blog research as far as keyword research, SEO goes to make sure that we're optimized to get traffic. Um, but then we'll post it up on the blog. Then we'll send out an email newsletter. We'll copy and paste just like the first paragraph of the blog, leaving kind of the end sentence, the ending of the sentence off to encourage people to go over to the blog to continue reading it. Um, and then of course, we'll promote it on social media as well. So it's a really easy way to get more content posted in a bunch of different places without actually having to do a lot of more work. 
Um, so if you're better at talking, uh, maybe instead of typing or just better over video, or you really want to get a YouTube channel going or IGTV type of thing going, um, do a bunch of videos and you can easily transcribe them and then post them up as a blog. Wonderful. I love that. I, I'm going to have to like remember that myself uh, to, you know, because, you know, at, at, when you've been working for a couple of years with your business, you do have ton, a, a ton more content than you even can remember. So it's kind of nice once in a while to kind of, you know, take a day to try to go back through old content and keep it organized uh, so that, you know, you can pull from it and also uh, try to avoid um, file names for images that are just like random numbers or whatever and try to really take the time if it's a good image that you want to use um, over and over to um, just like put some descriptive words in the file name. So like if, you, if you've got them up on Dropbox, you can actually just, um, you know, search on one of those keywords and it's a faster way for those images to come up. Um, so, well, we are out of time, but um, I did want, I did put in the chat box another, like Christine said, writing blogs can be very, very painful <laughs> if you don't enjoy writing. But um, my big tip for help with writing blogs is to uh, download the Grammarly app on your computer and it will suggest um, grammar changes or spelling changes for you. Um, and it just works really seamlessly, works really fast. Um, and that will, um, you could, that'll help you when, if you're writing a blog, but it also just helps if you're writing captions for social media, um, or if you're writing your newsletter, or even if you're just writing an email to somebody. So that, you know, like Glennis said, um, you know, you need to show that you're the expert and the, so, uh, you know, having good grammar and all that is a really important. Mm -hmm. Just one more thing I wanted to mention. So, um, oh, yes, on yes, SEO Linus. also, because if for product-based businesses, you can do image SEO. Don't forget to, you know, optimize your images as well, because they'll help you show up on image search on Google. So make sure you put in your image all text. <laughs> Don't forget to put your image all text in. Okay. And yeah, have, whenever yeah. I have, whenever I'm doing a blog, my keyword phrase, it, it, when you are like, say you're using WordPress and you're, you're uh, uploading an image and you're, you're putting it into your media library. Um, I use that keyword phrase in the alt tag and the description tag and the title tag and the caption, because, you know, I mean, the more times you get that keyword phrase in the code on your page, um, you know, it just helps with the SEO. You, you don't want to do keyword stuffing because that, you know, doesn't read well, but it's totally cool to do it on the back end of a photo because no one's going to see that. <laughs> so, but we, we thank everybody for joining us. Uh, please make sure if you have not signed up for Fashion Mingle, please join. Um, you can join for free uh, to be just a member of the community or you can join the fashion directory as well. Uh, we uh, will always be, uh, you know, we communicate with our members by sending out newsletters each week and giving you um, access to really cool opportunities that come our way. And we're always here to answer any of your questions and, and help you, um, you know, make the right connections. And I just want to thank our, um, our featured Fashion Mingle members today. Uh, and I really appreciate uh, Christine and Dee coming on and Matthew and Oliver uh, really uh, loved all of the uh, information you brought to everybody. Thank okay, you. Tomorrow. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone. Uh, our topic is influencer marketing and we have a couple of really big influencers joining us and Dee Olga's joining us. So you know her. Oh, great. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, so hope we see you tomorrow and they will tell us uh, all the ins and outs of what it's like working with an influencer uh, who is a really great first step to getting 
uh, you know, followers for your own brand or getting your brand out there. And then Thursday, Christine will be back with us talking about um, the production side uh, and the work that she does with her uh, her fashion designer clients. Uh, and so, and we will have uh, other people on the panel who are experts in different parts of production. So you'll be able to get all your questions answered in, uh, in anything related to manufacturing. Okay, everybody have a great evening. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Melissa. Bye. Bye.